Hi there, Andre here from Peak Motorcycles. I've just finished up my week of torture that is 39 Eichmer videos in four days. So I did what any normal person would do, uh, and that is I thought I'd make another motorcycle video. So in this video is gonna be about this bike over my shoulder. This is a 1981 Yamaha RS125 two-stroke, uh, but this one is a little bit different. So I'm here in my brother-in-law's workshop, and this is what the bike started out as and this is what it then became. And this is his homemade lithium iron battery pack made with a spot welder from a microwave. And this here is the bike itself. Now, I can't really get that close to it while it's in this workshop. So what we're gonna do is take the bike outside and give you a proper look at it. And here it is. This is the, uh, what should we call it? Let's call it a Yamaha uh, RS125E. So I'll give you a quick look at the bike itself and then Andy is going to very quickly uh, talk us through the bike because the rain has just started here in Switzerland. So as you can see, uh, it is now missing that Yamaha 125 two-stroke that would be in there. Instead, there is a battery box with a motor underneath. It's retained the uh, left side foot peg. Obviously no gear lever as there's no gears. Still got its side stand, center stand, still got the same chain drive that's on there, the same adjusters. Coming around the back, all the lights and everything is, is also the same. On this side, again, all the same. It's still got a foot brake. Uh, instead of having the uh, engine cover there, you can just see the, the motor. And then coming up onto the handlebars, uh, we have a, uh, a throttle. It's kind of like a throttle with a front brake. Uh, over the bars, we do still have the, uh, the speedometer clock and we still have the warning lights. Although now instead of oil and neutral, that means batteries off and batteries on. And then we have a battery meter, which at some point may go into what was the rev counter. Uh, on the left side, uh, we just still have the same controls for the lights. Uh, no clutch lever, because there is no clutch. Uh, coming down to the front, uh, we just have the original, oh, there we go, the original disc brake. And everything else about the bike is pretty much as it was when it was an RS125. Yeah, Andre almost um, uh, told you all the important bits. Uh, what I can maybe mention is uh, the battery that I built myself is uh, about 3 kilowatts. It takes you 50 to 70 kilometers on one charge. Um, I, I put in an engine of uh, 10 kilowatts, so I still have the same power that the, the original bike had, so I didn't want to lose any power and I couldn't make it stronger either, otherwise I would not be able to bring it through the uh, road. Um, uh, tests. Uh, that was uh, maybe the hardest bit. When I started uh, the project, the uh, first thing I wanted to know is it all, is it possible to do something like that at all in Switzerland? But I said, yeah, actually switching the engine is something you can uh, do as long as it um, is not dirtier than before, and that's no problem with the electric. So I started uh, the project. It uh, took me five years in the end, a little bit longer than I expected. I don't know whether I started, would have started it if I knew it was going to take me so long. Um, yeah, I left pretty much everything original, um, also because uh, it's then easy to get through the, the, the tests. And um, inside here, the tank, there's no fuel obviously anymore. Uh, there's space for the, the controller, which uh, drives the, the motor. And there's also a small charger in there, so I can just plug it, it uh, into the mains and recharge it like that. It takes about uh, five hours to recharge it completely. Uh, if I'm on a, on a trip, I can also uh, carry an external charger with me which then uh, uh, fills it up in, in, a, in an hour. So within a break, I can uh, have a lunch break and then I can go on again. I really needed all the, the space uh, that was available. It's a small bike, bike, so I tried to fit in as much battery as possible. Also here, uh, this is um, filled with some electronics. There's a DC-DC converter, which uh, converts the 72 volts from the batteries to the 12 volts that uh, I need for the lights and, um, and uh, the normal things you have on a motorbike. Yeah, that's about it. 
Great, uh, mm -hmm. I think I'll go for a ride. Right then, so here I go, my first go on the Yamaha RS125e. Uh, it's on the centre stand, but it's so low that I can sit on it like that. So here we go, so it's the middle position, as I've just learned, is the on. Oh, one further. One, one pass, so one o'clock, there we go. So it says there's an oil light, but that actually means it's not connected. So the first thing I've got to do then is push this button. It says neutral, which means it's in drive. It's going to rocket off the centre stand. And there we go. Uh, mirrors out a little bit. Right then, wish me luck. Oh, reaching for a clutch which isn't there. And super quiet. All I can hear is the uh, electric motor. So my first thought is it's a long time since I've ridden a 125. So it feels kind of small for that, looking down. Uh, the tank feels very narrow uh, between my knees. But that on its own is not a problem at all. The bike itself is incredibly smooth. Uh, all I can hear really is a very slight whirring of the motor. And I think the sound which is probably the, the, the chain. For coming along this roads like this in suburban areas, it's, it's absolutely ideal. I think as a city bike, this would be absolutely spot on. Now, what I did then is I just came off the throttle and then it keeps going. But what I did was I just tapped the, uh, the front brake. So connected up to the rear light is the mechanism for turning on the regen. So if you just touch the, uh, either the, the front brake or the rear brake, that puts on the regen, and then if you actually squeeze it a bit harder, you get your, your actual braking. I'm going to go through the small town of Ubicon, and then from there I'm just going to do a very short motorway stretch, and then, and then I'm going to come back over the hills, uh, a, few, a few twisties you can see up to my right. Now it is uh, mid-November here in, in Switzerland, and it's about six degrees. Uh, I did bring some warmish bike gear with me, but unfortunately just a pair of jeans. So this is going to be fun uh, on the motorway, even if it's just for one for one exit. And here we have a Yamaha dealer. I do wonder what they would make of this. No auto cancelling turn signals, obviously. So one thing I found with the Regen is that it really is just the lightest touch of the brake. Uh, and then you feel a very slight braking force. That's quite nice. Uh, I do also find that on a 1981 motorcycle, uh, the brakes are not as they are on a, on a modern bike, but that's just uh, something I guess I will get used to. What this bike does have is that real kick of acceleration that you get from electric motorcycles. And by that, I mean, you know, much, much bigger bikes that I've ridden. Now, I suspect this is a combination of the fact it has a 10 kilowatt motor, uh, it's not particularly heavy, uh, and the gearing. But I'm about to pull onto a, onto a motorway just to do one, one exit. So this will be an, give me an opportunity just to see just how, how, how quick this goes. A tunnel to get to the motorway, so hopefully this lets you see the battery gauge down below, because uh, that wasn't very clear in daylight, unfortunately. Uh, I know that you can see the neutral light glowing away down there. Uh, but that's just to show that actually it's in drive. Obviously, there is no neutral, as there is no no conventional gearbox. Uh, what I would say is that I'm you know I'm here doing what was that 60, 70 kilometres an hour in traffic in a tunnel, and I don't feel as exposed as I thought I would, given that it's just a, a small motorcycle. Uh, but the exit for the motorway is just coming up. Pro battery has decided to go. But just to give you an idea of you know coming along here, that's full throttle, hit 100 kilometres an hour. That's 60 miles an hour. It's still going. So it's going to carry on. Probably is it going to do 110? Let's have another go on this motorway. And actually having a slip road like this, maybe I can give it a bit more, just to give you an idea of the acceleration. I am coming off at the next exit, but still. I mean, that really does just take off. There we go, 80, that's uh, 60 kilometres an hour. Sorry, 100 kilometres an hour, 60 miles an hour. And yeah, that cranks on up pretty quickly. So yeah, it feels very stable as well. Uh, I don't know whether that's just because these Yamahas were built well uh, 43 years ago. 
but to see to get it a new give it a new lease of life uh, like this I think I'd be happier on this as an electric bike than as a petrol bike as a 125 that is oh, let's come off here a bit of regen just touching the brake it does slow you down actually really rather quickly on that regen which I suppose is good from a battery perspective Right then, let's see what it's like on some twisties. Yeah, that was really, really impressive. Just coming out of a town, so it's only got a 30 km an hour limit. But, and I'm going up a fairly steep hill, as you can, I don't know if that's picked up on the video, but it, it feels like, you know, there's just so much more there. You know, it's not, it's not struggling at all to pull my weight in the bike uh, up this hill. Uh, up here it should get a bit twistier, and then I can have a bit more of a, a bit more of a play once I'm out of this residential area. I mean, this is a very small road, it's barely big enough for one car, uh, but for a little motorbike like this. And yeah, give it some beans. Woohoo! I do love that feeling of uh, just that acceleration you get from an electric bike. And yeah, this feels a lot more like the bigger bikes, bigger electric bikes that I've ridden, rather than the smaller ones that are supposedly the 125 equivalents. Um, I know that Andy had to keep the power of this comparable to a 125, but in the UK at least, a 125 can be up to, I think, 15 horsepower. Uh, but a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are sort of 9, 10, 11, 12, somewhere around there. And while that's not a big difference, you know, when it's uh, the weight of the bike stays the same, that can have quite a big impact. So I'm guessing that this is at the upper end. I will look up what 10 kilowatts is and put it in the, put it in the video. But yeah, just zipping up here like that, just with a, you know, not even full throttle, just a little bit, is really fun. Shame the road's not a bit drier, uh, but still, let's give it another one. Go on! Oh, that's great fun. Yeah, that's hit 50, uh, just on that short stretch. Oop, bit of back brake, slow down for that hairpin. If you can see from the right just how far I've climbed up in this short distance, I head up into these uh, foothills of the Alps. But yeah, you know what? This is the sort of thing I'd even do just of an evening, just take this out for a bit of a raz around these little lanes. I'm sure on a summer evening where it's not six degrees uh, and I can feel my legs, it would probably be uh, even more fun, especially on a dry road. But again, the, the power is very, very controllable. It's got that Hall Effect sensor in the, the throttle, in the electronic throttle. And yeah, it's very uh, responsive. Uh, and yeah, you can roll it on and it just, just builds and builds and builds. It does top out, of course, uh, but that's just what happens, I guess. A lot happens on this road. If you're wondering what the red posts are, that's for when it snows. And we're not that far away from when the snowy season would come. Uh, and they will just let people know where the road is so they don't end up down in the, the ditch like the one on my left. And what I was hoping to do is to stop the bike somewhere here and give you a, a great shot of the, the bike with Lake uh, Fiervelche to stay, Lake Lucerne over there on my left, or even uh, uh, Mount Pilatus which is up ahead and is covered with snow. However, as you can see it's raining and it's not really the place for that. So I'll keep going for a bit further and then I'll just stop somewhere, uh, give you a few thoughts on the bike as I walk around it. So I've been out riding for about half an hour, uh, came out through the through the outskirts of Lucerne, through uh, Ebicon and then onto the motorway. Uh, shame my GoPro battery died but I think I got enough footage to include. And yeah, I'm now up in the hills, uh, the foothills of the Alps around Lucerne and I'm having a great time. I mean I'm freezing, probably should have brought my proper winter gear uh, for riding in Switzerland in mid-November, especially when it's a little bit wet, but the bike's been an absolute joy. I've ridden a few low-powered e-motorcycles and they've always just been a little bit disappointing especially when compared to the uh, far more expensive but also more powerful bikes which really have that sort of you just twist the throttle and it takes off and uh, yeah you just get that endless acceleration with no gear shifts. Uh, this feels more like those sorts of bikes if I'm honest. Um, the fact it'll do nearly 70 is kind of a bonus and I know it's a 10 kilowatt motor. Um, the brakes still feel like a 43 year old Yamaha because uh, they are. Uh, maybe it's carrying a bit more weight with the batteries, but yeah, I'm having a huge amount of fun. So I'm going to ride back down uh, this rather nice road that you can see there behind me, uh, back to the, the city of Lucerne. So I'll do a bit of town riding on my way back in. I'll probably film a little bit of it. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, for a home build, and I know he took, and my brother-in-law Andy took five years over building this, but for a home build, it's, it's brilliant. I'm really impressed. Actually, the rain has stopped, which is even more of a bonus. So uh, off I go again. And yeah, I'm, I'm having an absolute hoot. Uh, I mean, I'm always happy when I'm on a motorbike anyway, but this uh, far exceeded my expectations, I must admit. So now I'm on the road back to Lucerne, and on a twisty road like this, it just handles really well. One thing I have noticed with it is especially when you're switching between being on a bit of throttle and a bit of the regen braking is you do get a little bit of a, not exactly a vibration, but I suppose it's a bit like what you'd get on a petrol bike, just a bit of a, but there's, I think it's the slack in the chain as that just comes and goes uh, between tension and uh, tension on the top and tension on the bottom as you switch from uh, essentially engine braking, uh, which is what the regen is, it's using the uh, you know the motor to put some energy back into the battery. That's a tiny thing. That and the and that and the 42-year-old brakes. But again, once you get used to them, that is absolutely fine. One thing I could have done with is a slightly warmer day. So that's that's nearly it, I think. Uh, I've done about 50 kilometres, bit of motorway, went up and over uh, some twisties up a hill. Uh, done a bit of city riding, and yeah, I've been really, really impressed. You can probably tell by me waxing lyrical uh, throughout this. Um, I suppose having a 10 kilowatt motor in a bike of this size and weight is always going to be kind of fun. I mean, it did top out at, I think, around 65, 66 miles an hour, something like that. But still, that's quicker than a lot of the low power uh, electric motorcycles that I've ridden. So in terms of where I live, where there's a 60 mile an hour limit on the road, the ones that only do 55 on the dash and 48 on the in the real world just really aren't quick enough. Whereas this, by comparison, is absolutely quick enough. And it's been fun. You know, it does have that sort of uh, urgent acceleration. You know, just you you open up the throttle, and it just uh, and it just pulls and pulls and pulls. So I can certainly see why he's done it, and uh, I love it. Right, when I get back, I'll record my final thoughts, and then I will end the video. So that's it. I am back. Uh, I'm pretty cold. Uh, not that that's any fault of the bike. It's just the middle of November on a cold and wet day here in in Switzerland. But I've had a really fun fun ride out uh, just seeing what this bike will do and I think that's given me an idea that if as and when I do get an electric motorcycle I think 10 kilowatts is probably the minimum that I go for just because it does have that fun aspect about it when you do twist the throttle it does give you that that thrill um, yeah it's no good at 70-80 uh, miles on the motorway it just won't get there but it will certainly do 65 and it'll get there quickly so you know you don't feel like you're pulling out into traffic and you're just having to urge it along uh, to get there uh, the brakes are exactly what you'd expect on a bike from 1981 compared to today's brakes. Uh, but again, once you get used to it, it's completely fine. Uh, heated grips would have been nice today, uh, and maybe if I'd worn some warmer gloves. But anyway, I hope that's been interesting and useful, and if it has, please check out my other content. If you want to know more about this bike, I'll put a load of the links to Andy's YouTube page from where he built the battery pack and a few other things. Uh, in the description so please check that out if you want to see any further evolution to this you know subscribe to his page uh, and yeah if you are an electric motorcycle company in Switzerland and you're looking for some engineering support uh, I'm sure you can contact him through his YouTube web page as well that's it I'm all done I'm going to go inside and warm up thanks for watching And I thought my GoPro just clicked off, so I actually pulled into this service area uh, to sort it, but it looks like...